All right, this is Pops, and yeah, one out on a road trip for my anniversary to a comic shop that I love visiting the first time. It was like the 1990s, walked in, had the smell of the comic books. There was cases with old trading cards. There was a whole bunch of sealed boxes, wax packs. There was great prices on back issues. I played like cover price for a bunch of like 1990 spawn, early spawn and stuff like that. So just a great first visit. I couldn't wait to get back down there. It's a long haul for me. And so Mrs. Pops and I had a great conversation, but we planned, we took my daughter and a new son-in-law. We went down there. We're going to spend the day, but went down for this trip, went in there to go get some stuff. And I want to talk about what we got. And then I'll talk a little bit about my experience because I probably would have bought a whole lot more stuff. At least I plan on buying nearly twice as much stuff. And I'll tell you a little bit of why I ran. So the first thing we did was we were going shopping, right? So those boxes, right? OG boxes, OG spawn always looking for like super great quality versions or a super cheap 50 cent kind of copy that I can read, tear up, throw out some ads, things like that. So that's what I got first, right? Second thing I was doing was making sure that I have folks that I will shop for, right? We, I think Loki and I are kind of joking about the, the Pops Instacart, the, uh, what did Mrs. Pops call it? The Popsierge, Concierge, Popsierge. I shop for you kind of thing. Send me your list, send me your price range. Let's do it. Right, I'll put together the box and I'll ship it all to you. I'll do some of your legwork. So that's the next thing that I got. And obviously this one was a no-brainer. Great price on this one. The beautiful, one of the beautiful variant covers for him. I was able to get that. And this was like, this book was like in the wrong section. So again, it does pay to do needle and a stack of needles. I just got lucky with this box. And it was mixed in with like other S's, which is mostly like Spider-Man stuff or whatever. But this is a gold key Star Trek book. So this is a later gold key, not like a super, super old one, but a super nice one nonetheless. 35 cents. So it's in the 70s. Uh, super nice book with Spock on the cover and in great condition. A new stand, I believe. I don't think those were all like that. Anyway, so I don't think it's a super key issue, but uh, yeah, great book. So those are going to be headed Loki's way. So, yeah, if you're interested in that type of service, feel free to hit me up. So I was able to uh, just message him, let him know that I had these. And I got to be honest, on those, they weren't really on his, well, Predator's always on his shopping list. But it's the kind of thing where you start to get to know the person, you know what the taste is, you kind of know what overpaying would be. And we kind of work it out. And I think that's what's important. I want to get things in your hands that you would enjoy and that you would like. And I don't have a shop. I don't have a way of getting my stuff on the road as a shop right now. This is my intermediary service that I offer. So there you go. Um, obviously, I've been enjoying the new Transformers, G.I. Joe, Energon stuff, Void Rival, all that stuff, right? We're getting Duke, Scarlet, Destro. We're going to have probably, I, I don't know why they're already not having like a Transformer spinoff. I'm shocked there's not already. As, but, oh, and that free comic book take comic. Oh, it was so good. So thumb through some old ones. Found this, and actually I thought it was a flaw at first, and that's why I got it very, very inexpensively. This is a G.I. Joe number two. This is the original. Um, I thought there was an issue with it, and it's not. That's actually, so it's a snow cover. The snow actually goes all the way up into the top. <laughs> I thought that was actually a glitch, and that's why it was in the sort of like a cheaper bin and marked the way it was marked. So we got that. All right. The next book I got is the same kind of thing. Now, this is one of my biggest complaints with this guy. I walked in and some things were different with the signs. And there were so, still some books that were marked. These are cover price. Then there's other, there's a whole bunch of other books that didn't have those signs on them now. So I really didn't know how much that stuff was. I go to ask the man. He was kind of snarky about, I don't have time to price every single thing. And I'm like, okay, listen, it's not my job to price your store. So you decide what you want to do. And this is the biggest problem I have with stores like this. Like, it's not my job to price everything. And I don't want to stand there waiting for you to look everything up. So I'm only going to look for like a few things, maybe some things that I have a hard time finding. And that's pretty much it. If I buy anything, depending on how you handle that, he had a staff member that was way more helpful than he was. That was pretty much why I was able to get what I was able to get. But I wouldn't tolerate that. And it, it, make, it makes going back there like a very low priority now, where I was so excited before going in. And now I'm way down here doesn't really matter if I'm going to go again. If I happen to go to that side of the state or where I'm going to be, then it's a maybe I'll go. 
But again, there's so many places you can get stuff now. That's not the right way to approach things. Second problem is because of that, you end up having, let's see, there's one big section here with back issues, this middle area he had with short boxes, another area on the side that were all priced. And it's like, so you have two or three sections of stuff. They're not all together. They're not in order. There's no, okay. So now you've ruled out all of the normies. No, normies can't walk in your store and buy stuff unless it's like on a wall or something, right? I couldn't, my wife's not going to go in there and buy me something because it's just like, I want uh, Spawn 321, right? She's going to be like, I'll never find it in this guy's store. And he's a jerk whenever I ask for help. So I don't understand the business model. I'll, I'll take your comic store from you if you just don't want to run it anymore. Like if you just want to just walk away, feel free. I'll give you a percentage of the cut. I'll just take your store and I'll give you X amount of the profit or something like that. I'll take your store from you because this is nuts. You're, you're just turning people away from the hobby. <laughs> you're it's, I just, I just can't believe it. I just, I'm, I was so uh, sort of like put off by the fact that now I'm expected to just rummage through multiple sections of the store for certain things I'm looking at right now. What do you do when you're in that situation? Well, the glass is always half full, right? Hmm. So if he's not pricing everything, that means he's pricing some things, right? So you find the ones that aren't consistently priced or you you have to be really good at scrutinizing your stuff because you don't want to get took, right? So if you find books that are like 10, 10, 10, and this one's five, why is it five? Make sure that it's not a different printing. Make sure it doesn't have like a major fold or stress mark or something like that. So that being said, that's how Pops went into Pops buying mode. And I ended up with a beautiful first cover appearance, cameo of Bishop. And it, he he priced it. I didn't price it. So this I got this at like 20% of what it should have been because of this pricing situation. I couldn't believe it. And it's like because I just sat there until I found the right one. I'm like, okay, that was good. And I did the typical thing, like when, when my son went with me on free comic book day, he was teasing me because I'm pulling out books. I'm expect I'm inspecting them and I'm putting them back because they were just not good quality enough or they have stress marks, whatever. And and that's fine for certain books if that's what you want to if you want me to buy them for you. Like if you want to read them, right, then we don't care. We're just gonna go in and try to get inexpensive. We want to get decent quality, but we don't want to like we're not gonna we're gonna qualm over like two or three stress marks. Okay. So that was the first thing. Did it again on this one. Got it for about probably half the price spawn a batman virgin cover and got it for about half the price because multiples are priced this one was priced differently checked it probably just came in at different times or it's it's one he's had i mean that, that is kind of how you, you do things you you move your inventory you consolidate them all together you put them in order so you don't have these type of discrepancies and really reality is what he should do let's say you have five books at ten dollars and then you acquire and you have, let's say, $5 in them, right? So you're going to double your money, right? So you have $25 invested in five books. But now you get a whole bunch of them, let's say, for like two bucks, whatever, right? Now your average per book drops from $5 down to, let's say, $3. You can put all those books on sale at a significant thing and easily make your money back and probably move them significantly faster. This guy had no desire to move things fast or he would create an environment where that was easy to do okay all right the next books are all the exact same category as the bishop book where a bunch of them are priced a certain way and then this one's not and this is priced a certain way and this one's not so got a vader beautiful vader book super good price on that Again, Ninja Turtles, big, big run on Ninja Turtles right now because of Last Ronin, but this is not a Last Ronin book, but these are just beautiful. As you can see, they're just these beautiful books. And this one there's only, only 500 of. I did not know that till I got it in the car. I looked on the back. There's like, it's serial. It's, it's not serial numbered, on, I think, on the front, but it's through the comic corner. There's only like oh, 1,500 of them. No, it says 500. There's five, it's a slash. That's 500. Yeah. So... Yeah, just played the game the best I could, came out of there. I have to be honest. Probably would have just bought double this. What about double that amount? And then the last thing I bought was more like nostalgia thing. I'm sure one of you want this. So you guys let me know what you want. I got a great deal on it. And I didn't haggle. Well, we haggled over the whole thing. I put so we'll get to that. We'll get to haggling. But I got the whole thing. So the last thing I got was the original 1990s, the best selling comic book of all time, right? X Men number one. Jim Lee, Chris Claremont, right? And 
the set is for all five books. So they form a puzzle. The one I showed you, that's the, the one that has the fold out. So they all fit together. Okay. So each thing has a piece of the puzzle. Let's put these together here. So you guys can see, I okay, guess this one goes this way with Storm on that side. Right? So it fits together like a puzzle. And you line all four of them up and they form a nice giant, giant image of all the X-Men. So this is this is the other the other side fits to this, so it connects. So there you go. Thank you. So all five covers for that. So I bundled all my stuff together. Some stuff's priced, some stuff's not priced, some stuff we've already talked about price on, put them all together. So he's X. Um, now how about can you do just this? Kinda did. He knocked off a little bit more, which actually was about 10%. I shouldn't really dog it because it, it seems like it's more than that when you say 10%. It actually was just a few dollars, but I'll take 10% pass that along to you right because it's cheaper for you it's cheaper. it's cheaper for me it's cheaper for you but he just made the entire process of going to a store so much more work than it should have been and the excitement level of what i had can you imagine i would have bought double that based on what i spent i budgeted for twice amount for for double that amount of money so i would have spent probably like that much more because i would have bought so much more books and but instead it become i don't want to keep randomly pilfering through boxes this stuff's not priced this stuff is kind of priced but not i gotta go talk to the guy oh then i hate it when there's like the arrogant nerd syndrome okay so i found these uh prequel star wars banks so it's obi-wan bank a qui-gon bank and darth maul fits in the middle when the banks will actually fight one another had these went went with my kids were young they were the favorites of so the family. Everyone loved it. My daughter recently mentioned them. If you go back to that What's Your Story with my daughter, Taylor, you'll see her mention. Those are the ones things she wished she had. They did not survive the move. They fell. There's a tree that fell, hit the shed. I was in there trying to clean all this up. My coat caught them, knocked them over. Anyway, they're broken. So I saw these, these, these banks up there. Now, I don't know if he had all three. I know he had two. He pulled two down first. So he, he was ready to ring me up because I was happy with the price. So I started going to inspect them, and sure enough, they're broken as well. And the guy was kind of snarky. Again, the helper guy was being helpful. Snarky owner. What? Well, you didn't get the third one down. And I'm like, he's looking at them. And I'm like, yeah, because it's broken. It's completely worthless. You can't fix their hands once their hands break off. They're not made like that. And it's like, you're not making it easy for me to want to come back in here. And you're definitely not making it easy. Because my daughter and uh, son-in-law, they didn't buy anything. And my, my wife didn't want to stay in there. It was hot. So, well, he had the back door open at one point, which I thought was kind of weird, but he's probably loading something in or out. Um, you have to make your environment pleasant for people to want to be in. You have to make it pleasant for people that are not into what you're into want to be in there. And you got to be able to find what you're looking for. Like, I don't... <laughs> oh, it was so frustrating. Um, but we came away, I think, with some good... good The, the stuff we got, and I say we because two of those are going to Loki... And they're open to go to other folks if you're interested. I think we got a good deal on stuff that that is good for everybody involved, right? It's a good price. It's a good situation. And I want more of that, not less of that. So I did find a guy online, um, a store that I didn't know about here closer to me in Florida. So I was able to get some other stuff coming soon. So that'll be in our in our hopes. So I got to meet up with, because one of those things where I don't go into town very often, I'm kind of in northern or central Florida. This guy's more like in southern Florida. So, yeah. So, but yeah, it was uh, always good to go in a store. Tons of stuff. And there was like, oh, there's there's like loose cards in boxes. There's tons of boxes of stuff everywhere. There's stuff underneath all these, these tapes. He has more stuff than he even knows what he has, right? He's sitting on tens of thousands of dollars. But because of the chaos in the mountain, he has no way of making any of that money. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer, a believer of churning it, turning it. Um, you can always buy it again. You know, some people, oh, I can't sell it. You know, it's exceedingly rare that you have something that you can't replace. It might be expensive, but you could replace it. And then again, is it out where you can enjoy it? I'm a big I'm a proponent now. You can see Mrs. Pops put up the shelf. So I have at least eight of my graded books are on the wall now. And I think I only have two of those listed for sale on eBay right now. Yeah, I put up the three Star Wars books for Star Wars month. Got a couple other books. We'll kind of rotate them out a little bit, but I just want to enjoy them. You know what I mean? But everything, everything sold 
I mean, I don't want to sell gifts. I don't want to sell things that get personal. But for the most part, if you sold it, you could get it back. It's not the end of the world. This guy didn't seem to have any clue about how to turn his business and pay his rent and make makes you know make this an enjoyable experience for everybody. So he had a lot of cool stuff, but uh, needle in a stack of needles is what I told Loki, and I kind of stand by that. So that's my take on this experience. Hopefully you guys uh, can tell me some of your experiences, places you think I should go, especially if you're in Florida. Let me know. And if you've seen these comics that you want or things that you are looking for, hey, listen, Pump's Concierge is uh, kind of a real thing. Let me know. We're more than happy to hook you up. Hopefully make you happy. And we can all just enjoy good stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Pops.